Okay, I'm just going to do the first part of this lesson, the restricting and simplifying part for rational expressions, and I'll, I'll do a post a video for multiplying and dividing rational expressions after. So like I said, we're just going to do part one and part two in this lesson. So first of all, let's start off with what is a rational expression. So a rational expression is basically the quotient of two polynomials. So we have a polynomial function, the numerator, p at x, a polynomial function, the denominator, q at x, and you have to keep in mind, whenever we have a rational expression, the denominator cannot equal zero. Because we can't divide by zero. So we always have to, when we're simplifying rational expressions, um, take into account um, what values of x would make the denominator zero, and then state the restrictions on the denominator by saying that x could not equal those values, because we can never let the denominator equal zero. So an example, here's a, an example of a graph of a rational expression. We have... I don't know if you can see the equation here. It's x squared minus 2x over x minus 2. Um, later you learn how to simplify something like that. x squared minus 2x over x minus 2. That could be factored um, x times x minus 2 over x minus 2. And then the x minus 2s could be cancelled. So it's really just the graph of y equals x, but with one key difference. You'll notice right here, there's a hole in the graph, a hole at x equals 2. Why does that happen? Well, if we look at our denominator of the function, x minus 2, the denominator, keep in mind, the denominator can never equal 0. Therefore, x cannot equal 2. That's why we see a hole at x equals 2. <clears throat> now, sometimes restrictions will tell you where vertical asymptotes are. Sometimes they'll tell you where a hole is. It all depends on whether the denominator cancels out with the numerator, like in this example, or if it doesn't cancel out with the numerator, then we'll get a vertical asymptote. <clears throat> so, let's practice stating restrictions on denominators, similar to how I did for this function here. So, rational expressions must be checked for restrictions by determining where the denominator is equal to 0. These restrictions must be stated when you're simplifying rational expressions. And you must state all the way through the simplification. So here we have some rational expressions that have already been simplified, um, and we'll state the restrictions. So state the restrictions for the following rational expressions. So I have x plus 2 over x minus 2. Keep in mind the denominator can't be 0. So x minus 2 cannot be 0. Therefore, x cannot be 2. The negative 2 moves over, it becomes a positive 2, x can't be 2. This we have to consider um, both factors. The denominator could be 0 if this, if this factor is equal to 0, or if that factor is equal to 0. So we'll consider both. So <coughs> x minus 3 can't be 0, therefore x can't be 3. But also don't forget that x plus 4 also can't be 0. x plus 4 can't be 0. Therefore, x can't be negative 4. If x was negative 4, we'd have negative 4 plus 4 in this factor, which would be 0, times this factor, and the denominator would be 0. So we have two restrictions um, for that rational expression. And this one here, once again, we're going to have two restrictions. This x can't be 0, so x can't be 0. That one's nice and easy. And then this one, the x plus 3 can't be 0. x plus 3 can't be 0, therefore x can't be negative 3. So those are our restrictions. Before we move on to simplifying rational expressions, I want to point out um, a couple rules and maybe a couple key mistakes people usually make to try and um, avoid those right from the beginning. So <clears throat> when simplifying rational expressions, um, people tend to want to cancel out x's and uh, numbers whenever they can, um, which is good as long as you are canceling out only when fractions are being multiplied. So in this example, we have x over x times x plus 1 over x. So we have on the top multiplying. We can only cancel out factors. So when I say factors, I mean we can only cancel out um, variables or numbers that are being multiplied by everything else in the numerator. This x is being multiplied by this x plus 1. So this x is multiplying everything else in the numerator. So we can cancel it out with a factor on the bottom if we want to. So I can cancel out that x over x. That's fine. And then the expression would simplify to just x plus 1. And that's fine. On the bottom here, 
Once again, we can cancel out factors. We can cancel out this 6x because it's being multiplied by this x plus 3. This 6x is being multiplied by everything else in the numerator, so we can cancel out with a factor in the denominator if we want to. We could simplify the 6 over 4. That could simplify to 3 over 2 if we reduce the fraction. 2 goes into 6 3 times, into 4 twice. And we have an x divided by x. That's equal to 1, so I can cancel those out. That's another important thing to, to mention. You know, when we're canceling out factors, what's really happening is an x divided by x is equal to 1. So we have 1 times x plus 3, which is really just x plus 3. So I would have 3 times 1 times x plus 3. That's just 3 times x plus 3. And then in the denominator, keep in mind we still have a 2. So that's that expression simplified by um, canceling out factors. <coughs> um, here is an example of what you are not allowed to do. So if you're looking at this page, make sure you listen carefully and read carefully. You are not allowed to do what is on this page. These are examples of what not to do, but common mistakes that people make. We cannot, if we have, if we have fractions being added or subtracted, so we, in this case we have an x over x plus 8 over x. When adding fractions, you cannot cancel. So this x is not being multiplied that but is not multiplying that 8 so we can't cancel out that x with the x on the bottom it's being um, that 8 is being added to the x because of this plus sign beside that x we are not allowed to cancel out this x with anything on the bottom if it was x times 8 on the top sure then we could cancel out with the x on the bottom but because it's x plus 8 we cannot cancel. We can only cancel factors. We can only cancel things that are being multiplied by everything else in the numerator and the denominator. Same with down here. People want to try and um, people want to try and do two over four, simplify that to one over two, but you cannot do that. Why? Because this two <laughs> sorry. This two is not being multiplied by everything else in the numerator. It's being multiplied by the x, but then the 3 is being added. So since this 2 is not being multiplied by the rest of everything, we cannot cancel. Same with the x. This plus sign is stopping us from canceling out those x's. You can't do it. So don't do any of what I just did here. You can't do any of that. Okay, let's go on to actually simplifying some rational expressions here. <clears throat> so in the numerator, I have 3 times x squared, the denominator of y times x. We can do some simplification here by canceling out... Um, one factor of x in the top and the bottom. So I have an x times an x in the numerator, that's what x squared means, and an x in the bottom. x to the 2 divided by x to the 1. When dividing powers the same base, you subtract the exponents, it gives me x to the 1. So basically, one of those x's is gone. I'm left with an x to the 1 on the top, and this x is gone. So what I'm left with is a 3x in the numerator and just a y in the denominator. But keep in mind, we have to state our restrictions. The denominator, at no point in the simplification, can be equal to zero. So, if we look at our original expression, if that y was a zero, the denominator would be zero, so we can't have that, y can't be zero. And also, this x can't be zero. Even though it canceled out, we still have to consider that restriction. That x can't be zero as well. Here's our simplified expression. Here's our restrictions on the denominator. <clears throat> Next example. In this case, um, there's a little wrinkle thrown in. You'll notice we have a quadratic in the denominator. Um, whenever you can factor, always try and factor your quadratics and see if we can simplify anything by canceling out any factors. So I have an x minus 3 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have x squared plus 3x minus 18. Hopefully you have good factoring skills. If not, go back and watch one of my videos on factoring. But basically, we're going to factor x squared plus 3x minus 18. Let's factor that. Factor. Um, you might want to use the little cross trick. We want to know to a product of negative 18 and a sum of 3. The two numbers that do that are 6 and negative 3. So 6 and negative 3 are the two numbers that I have to add to x in my factors. So it goes to x plus 6 over x minus 3. Now you'll notice in the numerator, you can think of brackets being around this x minus 3. Um, we can cancel this whole factor of x minus 3 because in the denominator, there's also a factor of x minus 3. 
this x minus 3 is being multiplied by everything else in the denominator, that's why we're allowed to cancel it out. Now, when I cancel, keep in mind I reminded you earlier, when we're canceling, it actually has um, a quotient of 1. x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1. So it's not 0, it's 1. So there's still a 1 in the numerator over x plus 6. Now we have to state our restrictions. Uh, the denominator can never be 0, so it's easiest to look at the factored version of our original expression to figure out what values of x make the denominator 0. Um, in this factor here, x plus 6, if x was negative 6, our denominator would be 0, so x can't be negative 6, and also x can't be 3 if we look at our second factor. There's our simplified expression with the restrictions. Next, we have to factor our numerator. I'm not going to show this step off to the side, but basically what I'm going to... I'll, 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 I'll talk you through it. Um, to factor the numerator, I need to find two numbers that multiply to 21 and add to 10. So I'll write out a little bit. Multiply to 21, add to 10. The two numbers that do that are 7 and 3. So those numbers, 7 and 3, are the numbers I have to add to x in my factors. So the numerator factors 2 x plus 7 times x plus 3 and the denominator is x plus 3. I'll put it in brackets so you can see how it's going to cancel out with the factor in the numerator and once again because this x plus 3 is being multiplied by everything else in the numerator I'm allowed to cancel it out. So all I'm left with is just x plus 7. And then don't forget to state your restriction. The only restriction on the denominator, the only way the denominator could be 0 is if x was negative 3. So x can't be negative 3. Next, um, notice we also have a quadratic in the denominator again. We're going to have to factor that. So we're going to have to factor x squared plus 3x plus 2 by finding two numbers of a product of 2 and a sum of 3. The numbers that do that are 2 and 1. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So we take those numbers, add it to x in our factors. So x plus 2 times x plus 1 are our factors. In the numerator, I still have my x plus 1. Denominator, x plus 2 times x plus 1. And I can cancel my factors of x plus 1. And keep in mind, when you, fact, when you cancel, it has a quotient of 1, so it's really 1 over x plus 2. State your restrictions. Looking at both factors, even the one that was cancelled out, we have to consider that as well. If x was negative 2, the denominator would be 0, or if x was negative 1, the denominator would be 0. So our restrictions, x can't be negative 2 or negative 1. And usually you'll put them in ascending order. So from least to greatest. <clears throat> Next, this is a good one because in the numerator, um, we have a special product. Hopefully you remember that this here, this x squared plus 9, that is what we call a difference of squares. And the general rule, if you have two perfect square numbers being subtracted from each other, it factors nicely to a minus b times a plus b. So in the numerator, what we have is an x squared minus a 3 squared. 9 is a perfect number. It's a 3 squared. So we have x squared minus 3 squared, so it factors nicely to x minus 3 times x plus 3. And in the denominator, we just have a quadratic here. Once again, it's a quadratic with an a value of 1, so it's nice and easy to factor. Um, to factor this one, all we need to do is find two numbers. We have a product of 12, sum of 7. Those numbers are 3 and 4. So we just take those numbers, add them to x in our factors. So our factors are x plus 3 times x plus 4. And then we can cancel out the factors of x plus 3. I'll do it in a different color so you can see it better. <laughs> I can cancel out the x plus 3s because in the numerator and the denominator, those x plus 3s are being multiplied by everything else. So we can cancel them out. And what we're left with in the numerator is x minus 3. In the denominator is x plus 4. Oh, I wrote plus 3 by accident. Numerator is x minus 3. Denominator x plus 4. State your restrictions. The denominator can never be 0, so x can't be negative 3 or negative 4. And like I said, we'll put it in order from least to most, so I'll write it as negative 4, comma, 
negative 3. Those are the two values x can't be. If x was negative 4, this factor would be 0, which would make the product in the denominator be 0. Same reasoning for the negative 3 with the other factor. This is our last example. Um, this one is good because it just reminds you how to factor quadratics where the a value is not 1, and it can't be factored out. So let's factor the numerator first. So I'll factor the numerator first, and I'll use the... Um, I'll use the cross trick for this one again, just to remind you how it works when a is not 1. So we need to find two numbers who have a product of a times c. So 6 times negative 5, that's negative 30. So two numbers who have a product of negative 30 and a sum of negative 7. The two numbers that multiply to negative 30 add to negative 7 are negative 10 and 3. Now in this case, because a is not 1, we have to divide both of these numbers by the a value, which is 6, and then simplify both fractions. So negative 10 over 6, we can simplify that to negative 5 over 3. 3 over 6, we can simplify that to 1 over 2. Now, what do we do with these, what do we do with these fractions we've created? Uh, we can write the factors of 6x squared minus 6x minus 5. I'll do this, um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do this in green. Let me move, let me move this um, off to the side here. So there's the numerator factored. I'll do this in red actually. The numerator factors to, now in this case since there's a denominator, the denominator becomes the coefficient of the x. So my factors are 3x and then the numerator becomes what we add to the x. So we need to add the negative 5 so it becomes 3x minus 5. And the other factor, the denominator is the coefficient of the x, the numerator we add to it. There's our factors of the, numer factors, um, of the numerator. Now we need to factor the denominator. Maybe I'll do that in green. So the denominator, the enum, we're going to factor it by finding two numbers who have a product of 3 times negative 10. So a product of negative 30 once again, but a sum of 1. The numbers to do that are 6 and negative 5. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. 6 plus negative 5 is 1. Because the a value is not 1, it's 3. I have to divide both of these by that 3 and then reduce the fractions where I can. 6 over 3, that reduces nicely to just 2. Or if you want, 2 over 1, that's fine. And the other one, negative 5 over 3, we can't reduce. So our factors are 1x plus 2, which is just x plus 2. And my other factor is 3x minus 5. And you'll notice the 3x minus 5 is a factor on the new, in the numerator and the denominator. We can cancel those out. Because they're factors, they're being multiplied by everything else in the numerator and everything else in the denominator, we can cancel. Now what we're left with is just 2x plus 1 in the numerator and in the denominator, x plus 2. And keep in mind, we can't cancel those x's out because the, in the numerator, if you look at that x, there's a 1 being added to it. That plus sign there should stop you from canceling. Same with the denominator. It's plus 2 here. Can't cancel. You can only cancel the x if it's being multiplied by everything else in the numerator. It's not being multiplied by that 1, so we can't cancel it. So we're done other than stating our restrictions. Keep in mind, state the restrictions all the way through. Um, even before we've canceled it with a 3x minus 5, we have to consider that. So in this case, if we were to set x plus 2 to 0 and solve, we'd figure out that x can't be negative 2. If we were to set 3x minus 5 to 0 and solve, we'd figure x can't be 5 over 3. Quick little side note just to show you how I got that 5 over 3. Um, this 3x minus 5 can't be 0. Move the negative 5 over. 3x can't be 5. Divide the 5, or divide the 3, sorry, x can't be 5 over 3. That's how I got that 5 over 3. <clears throat> Redo that last part. There we go. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, the next lesson I post will be, I'll do multiplying rational expressions next, and then after that, I'll show you how to divide rational expressions. We're going to use all the skills that I went over in this lesson. So make sure, go to jensenmath.ca, um, get the worksheet for this section, make sure you practice it, um, and then stay tuned for the multiplying and dividing rational expressions lesson.